why are we patriotic today? Like, where does that come from? And you come to a place like this, and you see this battle, and you hear this song, and you're like, this is why people are so moved, and this is why the land of the free and the home of the brave is so important. Fort McHenry in Baltimore preserves the site of the historic Battle for Baltimore, fought against the British during the War of 1812. The American victory here was forever memorialized by the Star Spangled Banner, a poem written by Francis Scott Key. Key witnessed the shocking battle and saw the glorious flag raised in triumph over the fort. Set to music, Key's poem was destined to become America's national anthem. The United States is very unique in that our national anthem is about the American flag. At Fort McHenry, some of the most powerful symbols of the country come together. This is the power of place. The importance of Fort McHenry comes from its pivotal role in the War of 1812. The fort had been built here during the Revolutionary War era. By the time of the Battle for Baltimore, two years into the War of 1812, the British had already burnt Washington, D.C., and had assembled a huge army and fleet of warships, fresh from victory over Napoleon, to launch an attack by land and sea against Baltimore. You could make an argument the United States was literally losing the War of 1812. Baltimore was the third largest city in the United States, a shipbuilding center and a valuable prize. Standing between the might of the British Navy and the British Army was a small fort, Fort McHenry, manned largely by recruits and citizen soldiers and a number of militia scraped up from the city of Baltimore and the surrounding counties. They had seen the British Army burn Washington to the ground. They saw the American Army run at Bladensburg. Now they were here looking out over the top of these battlements here, out at the mightiest fleet that the British Army and Navy had ever sent here. There was 50-some ships out there, and there was no guarantee that those ships wouldn't pummel this fort down into the dust. From here on the ramparts of Fort McHenry, you can look down the Patapsco River. Francis Scott Key's truce ship was about four miles away, just beyond where the modern Key Bridge now stands. The enemy ships were about halfway to the bridge. All night, the British fired about 1,000 shells at the fort, 700 rockets, the defenders hunkering down behind the ramparts. That was the only shelter they had, not only from the shells and the rockets, but also from the rainstorm that went all night long. By dawn's early light, the rain ends, the bombardment ceases. A giant flag, 30 by 42 feet, one of the largest American flags even sewn at that time, was hoisted as a special act of defiance. And the British sailed away, giving up their attempt to take the city. And the defenders jumped up on top of the ramparts and cheered as the big flag went up. And those cheers echoed down this Patapsco River. It must have been a moment not to be forgotten. Key clearly understood the moment. That rush of emotion led him to write the words that became the Star-Spangled Banner, the national anthem. You know, the guns have been silent now for about 195 years, and yet the site still resonates with people. The reverberation still continues today. Fort McHenry is open all seasons. Special summertime events, reenactors, and rangers strive to bring history alive. Everyone who comes here makes a connection. Everyone who comes discovers heroes. High schooler Tyler Mink plays fife in the Fort McHenry Guard Band. I think the War of 1812 is important because it's one of America's forgotten wars. It's likened to the Korean War, and I believe it's important that we relive it here because the bricks cannot speak for themselves. Battery! Fire! Robert Stewart, a park ranger, studies history at Coppin State University. Research shows he may be a descendant of slaves freed to Trinidad by the British during the War of 1812. Study of history 
allows you to make connections between what has happened in the past and what's going on in the present to determine a new future. When we look at history, we study history, we see the mistakes of the past, we see the good things of the past also. So if we take the good and the bad, blend them together, we can make a better future. That's why I study history. Richard Manical, a veteran, is a volunteer reenactor. Learn what happened here, but make it your own. Whatever you think it means for you, living in this country that we live in. And I've seen people go away with smiles on their face. I've seen people go away kind of somber because maybe a family member was buried underneath the flag. I've seen veterans cry when they're here. So it, it just depends. Each person has their own personal connection, I think, as to what that flag means to them. Catherine Holden is a high school history teacher and seasonal park ranger. For me, the flag embodies everything we've been through over the last 200 plus years. It is truly who we are and what we've been through. I mean, whether it has the 15 stars that we see on the, the period flag of the War of 1812, or if it's got the 50 stars, it's, it's what we've experienced and how we've changed and grown as a country. Fort McHenry was a military post before and after the War of 1812. This was an important fort during the Revolutionary War. It served the country during the War of 1812. It was a Union fort during the American Civil War, a hospital during World War I, and a Coast Guard base during World War II. Since the 19th century, people have celebrated Fort McHenry. Yet its preservation was an epic of struggle and perseverance, too. Mrs. Reuben Ross Holloway, citizen activist, spearheaded efforts to make the Star-Spangled Banner the national anthem, finally accomplished in the early 1930s. Mrs. Holloway was not the only woman involved at Fort McHenry. When we think of Fort McHenry, we think of the soldiers in their blue uniforms. What we're going to see is during the War of 1812, women were bringing the water out to the fort, making sure supplies and rations were maintained during the battle. And even during World War I, when this is still an active military base, we're going to see female nurses serving here at Fort McHenry to help injured and wounded soldiers coming back from World War I. So they were definitely an active part, maybe behind the scenes, but always here. By the end of the 1930s, Fort McHenry, rescued as a national park and the anthem's birthplace, won a double distinction as America's only national monument and historic shrine. I think national parks are gifts to the American public. They're the most precious places in our nation. And we're so lucky here in Maryland that we have over a dozen of these places where real events happen, where incredible beauty exists in nature, where aspects of our culture and heritage are embraced and preserved. These are the places that tell us who we are as Americans.